So, here we go. This is interesting. We can talk about that. So, anyways, if I'm going to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to determine the points, the distance between these two points, and they're not graphed, one thing we want to label is remember, every point comes in the form of x, y, right? Every point can label as an x, y. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have two points. So I need some way to distinguish between point number one and point number two. So what I do is I use these nice little subscripts. x1, y1, x2, y2. All it is is a way to label them. The one and the two don't have any numeric value with the points. They're just a way to label them. Okay. Now, let's go and take a look at the distance formula. Now, this is something I presented to you that you're going to want to make sure you have written down, which we're going to talk more about on Monday as well. But if I want to find the distance between two points, that becomes the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Again, don't worry so much about this formula. We're going to talk more about where it comes from again. But right now, I just want to make sure that everybody has that formula in their notes so they can apply the problems that we're going to be working on today. Because in label, now what we're simply just going to do is, let me give you guys an example. If you guys remember, if I gave an expression 5a plus b, and I said a equals 1 and b equals 3, what do you do with the 1 and the 3? What did you, do you remember what you do with 1 and the 3? If I said simplify or evaluate this, what would you do with, the, what would you do with 1 and the 3? You'd plug it in for the one and for the a and the b, right? Good. What about functions? If I said f of x equals x plus five, and then I say find f of negative one, does anybody remember functions? What you do? Yes. No. Plug it in, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, if I say the distance is x two minus x one squared plus y two minus y one squared, and I said, hey, here's two points. You label them x one y one x two y two. What do you think you can do with those points? Plug them in. Plug them in. Exactly. So therefore, I have d equals the square root of x2, which is negative 5, minus x1, which is a negative 4, squared, plus y2, which is 3, minus y1, which is 9, squared. Now we just need to do our mathematics. And this is where a lot of students might, might get caught up. We have negative 5 minus a negative 4. All right? Remember when we have a double negative, yes? The positive. Yeah, that's what my teacher called add the opposite. Like you. Yeah, you, you add the opposite. It's like a double negative. So what you could just say is like this is like. Put a line through. There you yeah, go. it just turns into an addition problem. So therefore, I really have negative 5 plus 4, which is a negative. Nine. Negative 5 Nine. plus 4 is? Negative 1. <laughs> negative 1 squared, right. okay. then plus 3 minus 9. You have $3, you owe somebody 9. Now you show up for lunch and you have how much money? You still owe somebody. 3 minus 9 is? Uh, six. Close to negative 6. Not that's correct. So now we have the square. Remember, squaring is multiplying a number by itself. So negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give you a positive 1. Positive 1. And then negative 6 times negative 6 is a? And therefore, your final answer is going to be a square root of 37. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, how I applied the order of operations, right? Once we evaluated this, what was the first thing I did? I did inside the parentheses first, right? Then I squared. I did my powers. Then I did addition and subtraction. And now I'm simplified done.